What's up guys, Shuri here, and today we are going to be talking about Ono, the newest tank, which I don't want you to think of him as a tank, because while technically he is a vanguard, he does do some shielding stuff, and he can take a bit of damage. He is basically like an off healer that does some like really nice long range damage. If you think of him in that way, it's going to work out a lot better. While you can go up close and personal, and I'm going to show you different ways that you can do that and different ways you can play him at range, and these situations are going to come up no matter how you want to play him, so it is good to know both. We're going to go over control, and we're going to go over payload escort, but first it's just a random escort game against some platinum and diamond players, so you can see what he can really do, and basically right here, we're just trying to get in some good licks from far away the reason you actually want to play him as more of a ranged character is he has some pretty good aoe damage you can hit people who are wall peeking even if they are still behind the wall peak and it is a 3k nice shot right here i'm literally just throwing basically into the wall just two little uh no hit shots and then i go for that big uh 3k whenever i'm trying to hit these guys behind the wall that predictive shot immediately hits that Gloria and we get another one down and so basically you have like 6,000 extra armor on top of your little bubble and everything else so you basically can get shot for half of your health and then as long as you hide and let it regen you never need a heal to get back to full health and that's what's so cool about this is if you can stay back be annoying people are going to have to kind of go for you your healer can really focus on other things and you can help make sure no one gets burst down by throwing the shields on them and you're throwing out really nice like 3k haymakers and your other two quick shots also can kind of basically one shot people if you hit all three shots really quickly so this guy's actually not the worst dps ever but you don't necessarily want to be up close you shoot really really slow and this zero kelvin will absolutely destroy me luckily for me i had an awesome guy playing this neon and if you do want to go up close you're gonna need like a neon pocket healer and you got to make sure you're keeping them alive making sure that people are getting burst down that you're helping out because your bubble's gonna hit you no matter what so you do want to throw it on someone if you can and whoever's getting hit if you just see somebody through a wall that's yellow you can go ahead and throw it on them you also do aoe damage so you can hit through the yaw without it really mattering the reflect so a lot of things this guy does i love a lot of the times i even like to just hit two shots into the ground if i'm running around a wall where there's cover that way my next shot is gonna be a nice 3k bomb because there's really just no reason not to you do so much damage with that last shot having it be your first shot a lot of the time is a pretty good thing to do and right there we are able to just put out so much damage we kill the zero kelvin my teammate is up top getting him from behind i throw him my shield and we're just gonna push straight in we're gonna just do as much damage up close and personal as we can and like i said you want to play him more from range but you can go up close it isn't that he can't do damage up close it's just you will be much more accurate from far away and they cannot do a dang thing to you if you are far away because you have so much armor if they start to get good shots on you you can just go back let it regen wait for your shield to come Come back up make sure you got some teammates around you and then you can go back out you're all good to go right there we go 10 and 0 with nine assists we have the most damage we have 43k healing and the most damage taken absolutely amazing this character i'm telling you he can do some great stuff but it is harder to play than you might think you do have to lead your shots similar to how walling is and you do need good teammates every vanguard has this problem same with support that if you don't have good teammates to back you up it can be really hard to play and you do want a healer and honestly i would rather have a tank that isn't this guy if you're gonna end up having him you want to have a tank as well uh ruby and javali both work great but you can play this guy and then him be your tank you just got to be a lot more careful and to have a very good healer and also good dps to get people down and he can do that for your team and like i said you do want to be far away but you can do all the damage up close you can chase people and then when you see someone from 
super far away, you can go ahead and throw it at him. And another cool thing is that his third shot does such great AoE damage that's so high that on hill, he can break a hill so easy, especially on things like Emmental. He can do so much damage on that map, it's actually insane. And right here, we know we're getting destroyed. We try to get out of there, and there's just nothing we can do. And that is his one downside. He's very slow. He has no way to get out of anything. And his shield's okay, but it's not that great. And as you can see right there, we just got absolutely demolished by that Gloria. And that's why you do have to be careful. You do need to play with your teammates. And right there, I'm trying to go ahead and give him the heals through the wall, but I couldn't end up getting them. So I do just go and try to get some damage out. Luckily, the shell teleported in, and I was able to give him a little bit of armor there. And right there, I'm not even trying to hit him. I'm just trying to go back to the hill. And then we also have the Gloria in the hill that we went ahead and helped our teammates get him from behind. And we just do so much damage that it's actually insane. And then we go ahead and use our ult. We see that the Christine is low, so we kill him. And then we get this guy low. We get him up to where he can't go side to side. So the second that he's dropped out of the ult, he immediately dies into one of his shots. And we were able to get that triple, getting the rest of the time pretty easily. We're going to go back down here and make sure we got some heals on our team. And just protect everybody because the hill is pretty much over at this point if we keep it they have to contest and they're gonna run straight into a bus off they do and right there we do go ahead and use our knockback ability which I hate by the way that blade is so inconsistent it's pretty terrible but we did a pretty good job my teammates helped this one uh my recording screwed up because my ipad filled so i apologize that it's done with the in-game recording system but this game is a lot more like what you really want to do with this character we're going to do a lot of long range damage we're going to rush every once in a while to help get this damage in and we are going to be our forward looking person to kind of just show our team where everyone's at because we can get that entry damage and we can kind of get out but we do have to be careful we aren't invincible and we do have to be very very careful since we don't have a healer and so that's exactly what we do we get back we go on the hill and we are able to get pretty much all of our health back pretty much immediately we get the small heal and that's why i love this guy his armor is so much of his helpful that you can literally just gain all of it back so quickly and so as long as you don't take more than half your damage you're completely fine to go out and just do whatever you want really i mean if you're getting a couple shots on you you're really not in as much trouble as it may seem and then you just put your shield on you and you can just wait for it to regen go ahead get you a little health back to heal up the health that was lost and you're good to go right here we were down 4k damage and we are able to get it all back without ever getting a heal or ever getting a health back because of that armor pool and i think that's something that a lot of people underestimate about this guy and they don't really talk about is him having that much armor is so huge right there that he does exactly enough to be able to get our armor all the way down and we will get all the way back to full with just the smallest of heals which is exactly what we do we get a small slip liver heal there and we are good to go now and so that's one thing that you might want to think about is just make sure that you're not letting people get you too much past your uh like halfway point and then you can pretty much just regen by getting back and that's why i say that this is a long range character you want to stay back i know that it says the red team is winning but that's us it's just the way the uh recording system works sometimes but by staying back with my teammates giving them my bubble to keep them alive we won in a much more dominant fashion against a team that was actually good. And this really comes down to just straight up, you're doing a ton of damage from far away. You're healing yourself with your armor, so you're not having to take up any of the heals on the map or having to have a healer on your team. And you can just do so much with that. The resources you take are small, but the gains for your team is huge. And you're just tanking damage the whole time. Right there, we come out of our base because of the way the AoEs work. We are able to hit everyone that was trying to spawn campus all at once, just completely destroying them. We make the Osus run away, and we break us out of the base. Luckily, we do end up having a Jabali on our team, which is great paired with this. Because the Jabali is so good up close, you're so good from far away, 
you can give him the extra shielding he needs and he can do the same for you while you're just hitting people from far away. You guys are literally the perfect team. Ruby's also very good with this character so either one really works it's just whatever you prefer and right here we see the sniper and we are out sniping that sniper right there we just hit him for 4500 like it's nothing. I go ahead and just shoot two into the ground that way my next shot is going to be a power shot and we are going to end up just demolishing the Aletta and now we get some damage onto the Kaz and he immediately dies as well and I'm still just looking around for the Osus because hey I can take damage so me poking my head out it's not that big of a deal and also I can hit him with some pretty long range stuff he ended up throwing himself over us so he got behind luckily my teammates were able to take him out with a little help from me and instead of charging into that Aletta I kind of get back wait for my team to move in themselves and then I go in to help there's no reason to risk dying for no reason you got this just make sure that your teammates are there and you can go in close but you don't want to be the lead man out that's basically what I really want to press in this video is most tanks you want them to be the first one out in the open but this one isn't that because of your heal you want to be able to give your entry fragger like an aletta or like a shell the ability to live by giving them that shield right before they take damage and the shield doesn't last very long so you have to do it right as they're about to take damage or right as they start taking it so you do have to constantly be paying attention on who you want to shield because doing it too early like I just did there will make it actually disappear before it really matters so you do need to be really careful on when you time your shields it really helps to do it after someone's getting shot but you have to do it basically as soon as they're getting shot so they still get the benefit of being alive so it is something that being behind people really helps you so you can actually see who needs your heals and get it to them in the appropriate amount of time and on this map in particular I like to go up here and be the first First guy through the gate to go kill the Gatlin or the Gloria that's up top because you can do a lot of damage and you can take some yourself so it's not that big of a deal plus you can also take the high ground and do some range damage from up there if you would like I opted to go down and help my teammates on the cart by giving them shields and be able to do some damage and then we are going to just be able to take the cart to heal ourselves a little bit go ahead use our shields when we need to and do an insane amount of damage from far away they ended up getting a nice shield out so we had to be a little careful there just to make sure we don't die for no reason and we are able to just go around the fort did a great job to kind of make it hard on us but we were able to go in get that gatlin low use our shield to keep ourselves safe and then just do a lot of damage to that fort our teammates did an amazing job as well and then we go ahead and get that shell to nothing and our team just continues to roll them we get some pretty good damage onto the christina and this map I am putting up next to another one and it really shows the difference between what you can do when you have a good single target healer like this Labula on my team and what really really sucks is when you don't you have to play completely different we're up close personal we're not really worried about the fact that the other tanks can out damage us so severely because we have an iris and a labula so i can run in i can do this damage and not only that i really have to and so i do want to make it clear you can do these things but on a team like this that has zero healers you have to play cautious you have to play careful and that is something that a lot of people aren't getting that this character yes some games it will work where you can run in and you can play up close in like a traditional tank would and then if you think that that works and then it just doesn't work a lot of the time or it does some of the time it can be very confusing but what it is is when you have a good healer and also a tank you can do a lot on this character and you can even go up close but you're not always going to have that and it's really just a luxury of your team having a better comp. But this guy really should be played more at range. You need to kind of stay behind your team. And as you can see through here, we are doing a lot less of the killing, but our team is staying healthier and we don't have a healer and we're able to all stay alive. We're still doing some good damage and we're doing it from far away. This is the right way to play this. The other one was a dominant game 
And that's just because we would win no matter what we really did. We just had a better team and a better comp. But on this one, I need to make sure I have my teammates backs. I am the healer and I need to make sure that if anyone's getting bursted down, I can get them alive through it and then they can go to the cart to heal the rest of the health back up. And so that's really what we're doing. And right there, that was the longest range kill of my life. Oh my God, that poor Neon. But we are doing a really good job to keep our team alive and the cart heals a lot of the actual health stuff and then we can just make sure no one gets burst down before they can get over to it and that's really our whole function here keep everyone away from the cart do a little bit of damage here and there and keep everyone healthy with our shields and so this is the right way to play it you can play it the other way and if you have a dominant team or a healer in a tank go for it it's a lot of fun to play this guy up close but i just wanted to highlight the difference between the right way to do it and what you want to do in the harder games and then what's just kind of like a fun thing if your team's better because this guy is a lot of fun up close it's just the problem with him being up close if the other team's good you will lose to every single Jabali, every single Ruby, like every Fade, every tank in the game will just absolutely annihilate you up close. So you got to know that's a thing. And if your team's better and you want to play up close, go for it. But if you guys are on an even match, it's a lot better for you to just play a little more cautious, focus on your healing role, and just do what you can to get that AoE damage out and get some of the range. That's exactly what we're doing right here. We are all about getting that range damage. We let the Jabali do his thing. We're staying to where we can see the Labula. That way we have him to where we can like, get him those little bubbles if they focus him. Because remember, if we can keep that healer alive we are golden because they really have to burst down the healer to be able to kill the rest of us and if they can't they're screwed and that's really those single target healers biggest nightmare and their bigness biggest weakness is the fact that you can burst them down kind of easily if everyone focuses them but you can't do that with this character on the team and that's what makes it so cool this guy is a lot better than some of the other characters because he has so many synergistic opportunities to make the team better. It's not just the damage he puts out, but it's also the buff of the shield that he does that is really neat. And it also is a really big skill gap because you have to make the decision who you heal. You don't just throw down a shield onto the ground. You actually have to make the choice of who to put it on and there is a cooldown to it. And since it runs out, three seconds before the cooldown's up, you have to know when to do it also. So this character, it's not for people who want to play an easy character. It's a lot harder than probably any other character in this game to be good at. But if you're someone who likes a challenge and you want to play something that your skill really matters, this guy is the guy to do it with. Because you can make everyone on your team just enjoy the fact that they have an off tank that's like helping them live. You're still putting in that burst damage that's super crucial to be able to kill a lot of different heroes, including healers. Because, I mean, if you're hitting 3k, especially since this guy can do that into a group of people for a lot of damage. Like, I think I've hit up to three people for 3k and I hit two people regularly. So it's one of those things that once you get to level 10, you can start hitting multiple people with that 3k shot and it's so hard as a healer to recover from your team getting one shot by 3k like instantly and so if you can just continue to do that like that is so much damage you're putting out and his first two shots are very quick and it is something that you can do but again i do want to stress that it does take a lot of time and skill to be able to play this i mean all of these games were done in like the first few hours it came out so as long as you kind of get what's going on you can learn it very quickly it's just that I have done a lot of stuff with Waling and then getting used to having like Labula across map shots hit. Um, a lot of that kind of translated into this very easily and very well. And then I just kind of figured out what he was meant to do pretty quickly and early on, which is very fortunate because honestly, if I didn't accidentally kill some people from really far away, it probably would have took me a lot longer to figure out how to play this guy. Um, it, it's not as intuitive as any other character is like on the things that he's good at because of the simple fact that you think of him as a tank and he really shouldn't be i think i almost want to say that he should be like a healer but he does have a ton of armor and health so i see why they made him a vanguard 
but he is much more along the lines of an off healer that does good range damage. Like, it almost reminds me of a priest in the game World of Warcraft. Like, he does, like, some pretty good damage from far away. He bubbles people to help them live. Like, it really feels more like that than anything else. But right here, we are able to just do a pretty good bit of damage, and we're just getting back, trying to get behind our uh, tank, and then we're going around to the side to make sure that we have bubbles onto our Osus if he needs it, because we can tell that he is in a fight for his life, and as soon as it comes back up, we go ahead and get him with another bubble, and most importantly, we are able to get the fade pretty low. We hit him with a nice shot there, and then we go straight onto the Gloria. This Gloria is actually really hard to end up killing. We got super low lucky that he went for our teammate instead of us which made it to where we could push up into him and get the kill um one thing i don't like about this guy is his blade thing that does like 3k damage and knocks people back you have to be like super up close to use it and mine misses a lot i'm pretty sure it's because i suck but i'm not sure if that's it like I, I think i'm just doing it wrong maybe because it is the most inconsistent thing i've ever seen like sometimes it works exactly how i intended and um a lot of time it doesn't so i don't know why that is it's super annoying i know that but um so yeah if anyone has any ideas of why that blade is the way it is like and how i should be using it i think it's kind of similar to the uh, shell bomb where you hit it and then a certain amount of time later is where is going to hit the guy in front of you and so like I just don't get why that didn't hit him. Like, I guess I wasn't close enough, but I don't know the actual distances on it for it to do the maximum amount of damage or any damage at all. It's so confusing to me. So if you actually know how that ability works, just let me know in the comments. I would appreciate your take on what makes it more consistent for you or if it's the same thing. Um, his knockback ability from it has gotten me some pretty good stuff on control. Uh, and obviously his... Um, uh, ultimate knockback is really nice. It's gotten me some checkpoints on the offense, and it's also helped me get people off the point for a defense as well. So it's pretty nice, and I do like his kit, especially for things like payload on both sides, but mostly defense. And then control's really nice as well. And right there, you can see that I went four kills, three deaths, like all three were in the beginning. But look at that, 68,000 healing. This guy is an absolute animal, especially because most of that was done at the midway checkpoint for that game. And right here, we are in a 1v1 battle with this ruby, which is just a lost cause. You never want to be in that battle. Luckily, my teammates with the Cinder heals and also my ruby were right there. And that's why we regrouped with them and got right back. And that's what you really just need to make sure you're doing. Make sure if you got a tank that's nice enough to go help you, that you are taking full advantage of that. We wanted to make sure that we got that guy with our 3k hit before he got the heal we were able to do it and then our teammates do a great job to take out the shell with the christina orbs and shout out to my team um the other team had a lot of diamond players on it and ours had people with the green lion like frame on it so like these guys really stepped up to do awesome right there we get a nice little lead shot onto the sindri and what a stun ended up getting me good there and that really kind of sucked <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, but our whole team ended up dying off that except for the Gloria and I came in gave him a bubble to keep him alive as long as I could and he actually got back hit his ult and stayed alive himself and then I just tried to knock everyone back off of it and remember we have a Sindri healer and that's all we got to do is get him to us our uh, tank ended up switching over to DPS which was a great call because we did need more damage and it ended up working out perfectly and that's so cool that you can actually hit people through walls with these bubbles it made it to where i was able to save the gloria so he was able to keep the cart contested and that literally just saved us the game if i couldn't have hit him with that bubble our healer could have never gotten to him he would have just been completely screwed and not only did he stay alive long enough to contest the cart and get us all here he completely lived through it the whole time and so he's doing so much damage off that i am one shot now but I am alive, and we are actually able to heal off of it. We're given the, the worst off guy, our bubble, and we end up winning because of it. 
it's so crazy how much those little bubble heals really keep people alive, especially during huge burst damage. But what else is crazy is how much range damage you can really do. I mean, if you just think about it, look how much range damage this is. And we're just doing predictive shots, and all of that is just basically making it to where we can kill all of these people. That right there was an AoE hit, they got everyone low, and then we took everyone out off of that. Right here, we are hitting these guys for insane amounts, and right there, that guy was behind a wall. And because of the AoE and nature of it, it all works. Right there, we get a double 3k hit on them both and that is just crazy and right here we out snipe the sniper this guy is definitely a medium to long range hero and he can do the healing and all the things that being behind your teammates really benefits from so i know as a vanguard and you might really think hey i should be doing vanguard type stuff but look at this we just hit the osis across the map that was insane and that is what this guy can really do and then we hit the bubble through the wall to end up getting over here to help our victor and then we do some range damage we get out of the way of the hunter to end up living ourselves and it's just crazy what you can do from range and right here this aoe damage is crazy especially when you're funneling people through the spawn choke point right there we just hit three people for basically 10k off one hit and then that actually enabled me to go ahead and kill their entire team and as you can see that aoe part of it can even hit them when they're behind stuff and then when they're together as well and it's just so much damage but by far the best thing about this guy is throwing people on the ceiling i mean just completely straight trolling as much as possible and you can also use it to be able to get the checkpoint just throw the guy above the cart but you can just troll the heck out of everybody and that's pretty much just what i was trying to do every game for fun because i thought it'd be really funny and oh my god it was so funny just throwing people up onto the top of the ceiling every match <laughs> Like, it didn't really help my team out very much. I don't suggest you do this if you feel like winning the games. But if you just want to mess with people, it is so great. Especially Osis when he's already up in the air. You can get him so high. And, like, these guys literally just can't play. They're just thrown up in the air. And they're basically just giant pinatas for glorious and other things to shoot. Oh, it's so great. But I hope you guys have learned some stuff from this. And I hope it helps you out. I really appreciate all of you. Please like, subscribe, and share this to everyone else. And I hope you all have a great day.